Satan have you considered Job, my servant? And so the next understanding that you must realize as you're in your transitioning from losing to winning is that you must understand that it is absolutely an honor to be considered by God. See, see, oftentimes we consider the bad things that we experience in life and we experience the tough times that we endure in life as some of the most hard things to go through and we automatically identify or label them as negative. But what I need you to understand is that everything bad in your life is not negative. Understand the Bible says in Romans 8 and 28 that all things work together for the good to those that are called according to his purpose. Um, so listen, and I need you to understand today that because you're sanctified, you're not exempt from trouble. But not only that, that whenever you experience trouble, it is an honor to be considered for God's experiences. Uh, because God could have chosen anybody else to put up to the test. Uh, when God allows you to go through trouble, um, that's because he realizes that you can handle it. When he allows you to go through hardship, it's because he realizes that you can take it. Uh, when God allows you to go through tough times, it's because he's considered you. Somebody ought to think about every negative or bad thing, rather, that you've ever experienced in your life. Think about every time you almost threw in the towel. Think about every time you almost lost your mind. Think about every time you almost let go. I dare you just begin to look at all of those situations, and that all by itself ought to give you a reason to say, God, I thank you for considering me uh, because if you really think about it somebody should have died a long time ago but it allows you to make it to this point uh, some of you should have overdosed a long time ago but you've made it to this point uh, if you're like me sometimes you can you attempt it or you either even consider to commit suicide but God allowed you to transition to this point uh, some of you have been to your lowest state in life almost talking to it will not make it to the next day but God is telling you today you ought to be grateful that I've considered you because I've considered you means that I've purposed you because I've considered you means my hand is upon you he told Job you can do all that you want to do but don't put your hand upon him the reason why you can't put your hand upon him is because the Bible says that darkness and light cannot comprehend one another they cannot be in the same place at the same time in other words, Job could not put his hand, God, Satan could not put his hands on Job because God's hand was already on him. Uh, listen, I tell you right now, the reason why the devil could not take you out is because he couldn't put his hand on you. Uh, he could put some stuff up against you. He could shoot some stuff at you. But no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Uh, why? Because I'm more than a conqueror. If God be for me, then who, uh, I like how Pastor Brown used to say it. Who, 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 who can be against me? Look, somebody ought to tell your neighbor that the devil can't take me. The devil can't kill me. The devil can't have me because God's hand is upon me. Somebody say, I'm in the Lord's hand. I'm in the Lord's hand. And because I'm in the Lord's hand, that means he's covering me. He's protecting me. He's shielding me. Uh, he's blocking some things from taking me out. Uh, why? Because I have a purpose that I still must fulfill. Uh, somebody tell the devil you better back up and give me 50 feet. Uh, little move your hand. Uh, talk to the hand. Uh, I need you to move around. Uh, why? Because God's hand is upon me. Uh, somebody say I'm getting ready to lose to win. Uh, my situations aren't as bad as they seem after all. Uh, look, they're not going to take me out like I thought they would after Oh, uh, they're not going to cause me to go into depression like I thought they would after all. I don't have to kill myself over this foolishness after all. I don't have to throw in the towel after all. I don't have to lose my mind after all. Why? Because likeness and God cannot comprehend one another, which means that Satan hand and God's hand cannot be upon me at the same time. And because I was considered by God, that means that Satan's hand can't even come into my proximity. Uh, so somebody tell your neighbor, God's hand is a point. His hand is a point. 
His hand is upon me. His hand is upon me. And it goes now into verse 19, of course, 13 through 18 talks about the experiences, the things that God, that Job lost, his, his children, his things, his home, um, his cattle, all of his possessions. He lost them in verses 13 through 18. But when we get to verse 19, the Bible says um, that he lost one more thing. And then it goes into verse 20 and says, but then Job arose and it says, and he tore his mantle and he shaved his head and he fell down to the ground and he and he worship. See, the reason that we got issues in our lives because we do just the opposite. We don't know how to respond to trouble. We don't know what our response should be when we're going through something. Job had sense enough to know that because I'm considered by God, that is an honor, which means, God, I know if you brought me this far, you're not going to leave me by myself. That there is absolutely no way that you can cause me to be in something and not make a way for me to escape. Somebody ought to tell your neighbor that my response to an emergency is worship not fear. It's worship not depression. It's worship not suicide. It's worship not giving up. I dare you right now to activate your response and tell the devil that though you slay me, yet will I serve him. I worship through my trials. I worship through tribulation. I worship through good and bad because the Bible declares that I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Look, I dare somebody begin to let the devil know. Sometimes you got to talk to him directly. And let him know that though you slay me, yet will I serve him. My response is worship. See, sometimes when we go through trial, and when we go through tribulation, and when God considers us, we think that it's all bad. And because we think it's all bad, we give up and we moan and we murmur and we complain and we worry and we almost lose our mind. We rip the weave out of our hands. We take the glasses off our faces. We take the shoes off our feet and we just lay there in misery. But I come to let you know today that even in the midst of your misery, even in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your trouble, that's your time to prop yourself for triumph. Look, I don't know about you, but it's my pain that's preparing me for purpose. Uh, it's the trials that you experience in your life that's getting you ready to travail. Uh, I dare you right now to think about everything that you almost lost it over. Look, don't be spiritual about it. Really, think about it. Think about the times where you were not where you are right now. And that all by itself ought to give you a reason to say that if a God I live, uh, then for God I that God I've made it this far by faith. The old folks used to say leaning on the everlasting God. Look, I don't know about you, but somebody ought to say, God, I thank you for considering me for trouble. I thank you for considering me for tribulation because it's in the midst of my trouble that you're preparing me for purpose. All right. Listen. The Hebrew word for worship is Saha, S-A-S-H, Saha. And listen, it means to be obeisance or to bow or to reverence. Right. Mm -hmm. So Job immediately, in the midst of what he was going through, his response was to humble himself yeah. and reverence the Lord. Yes. Yes. Because Job understood that God was in control. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. That's good, son. Yes. The reason why we don't know how sometimes to get through what we're going through is because our initial response is not saying, King, work your wonders. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Our response is, is, King, why am I yeah. in worry? Oh, Jesus. Why am I in misery? Yeah. Uh -huh. That is the wrong response to God when you're going through. Yeah. Your response initially should always be worship. Yeah. Worship. Because worship throws you into a place of intimacy with God that allows you to communicate with God in a way that you can't.
content in the midst of your mental and physical and human state. When you worship God, you humble yourself to a place where you allow the Spirit of the Lord to minister to you. I promise you, if we did more worshiping, God would give us more answers. I promise you, if we did more worshiping, God would give us more direction. Uh, but we get confused and we get distracted by the things that we are encountering. And the enemy uses those distractions to detract us from the purpose that God has ordained us for. Because our initial response is a humanistic response instead of a spiritual response. Your response to trauma shall always be worship. Should always be worship. Yes, yes. God, I worship you. Enter in. Minister to me. Remove me all the way. Understand that worship is a form of humiliation. Yes. Literally, when you worship God, you are willing to humiliate yourself. Yeah. In other words, nothing else. The reason why some of us have not experienced to worship with God is because we're really not worshiping. We fake praises. No, we slow down the praise. That's what we do. We just slow down the praise. So instead of, you know, instead of shouting, we just slow it down real quick and we call it worship. But that's not worship. Worship is when you enter into a place where nothing else matters. The person next to me don't matter. How I'm going to pay my bills don't matter. What I'm going through don't matter. The fact that I cried last night don't don't matter who died yesterday don't matter the fact that I'm going through something don't matter when you worship you're worshiping to say to God that at this very moment in this very instant nothing else matters it's all about you in this moment it's all about you at this time in this period of space God all that matters is you I'm not thinking about what I'm gonna eat when I leave here I'm not thinking about what I'm gonna go through when I I step out of here. I'm not thinking about how I'm going to pay the next car note because in my worship nothing else matters. And so Job understood that in the midst of my trial and tribulation, my response is to isolate myself from the worries of this world and cause myself to lay prostrate before the throne of God. And when I do so, it's in that place I'll hear from the Lord. The Bible says that in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of the Lord, a fullness of joy. And that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The only way that I can enter into the spirit of God, the presence of God, is when I go into him with worship. And when I enter into his presence with worship, I don't know about you, but things begin to happen in his presence. Listen, chains are broken literally in his presence. Your worries are no longer considered worries when you're in his presence. Your trials and your tribulations are of no void in his presence. The things that you're going through are of no concern when you're in his presence. Somebody ought to tell your neighbor that I'm excited about getting into God's presence. Honey, you won't matter when I get in God's presence. Look, you, look, you got my attention right now. Oh, but you better get ready because I'm getting ready to go into his presence. And when I go into his presence, don't call my phone, don't text me, don't tap me, don't try to wake me up, don't ask me for nothing because when I'm in God's presence, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Nothing, nothing else matters. Listen, quickly, 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 quickly. The Bible says in chapter 2, verse 9, it says that, it says, Then said his wife unto him, Does thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. So in other words, you've been faithful to God all this time. And look what he just did. Look how he did Look how God just played you. And she said, so have, are you really going to retain your integrity? Curse God and die. My Lord. Do, do you not realize that your babies have just died? Curse God 
and it's over now. Just die. She, she says, have you, do you realize you've lost everything that we have? And you still have the nerve to say that you're going to still worship this God? You might as well curse him and die. Wow. In the midst of the things that God considers you for. Because everything you're going through, he's considered you for. In the midst of you experiencing the things that God has considered you for, people will not always have hope for your survival. People will always have the same faith that you have that you're going to come out. People won't always celebrate as if you're getting ready to come out of this thing. The people that we love the most will not always believe with you that you're getting ready to walk into greatness. But it's not because they don't love you. It's because people are limited. Don't misconstrue people's lack of faith for lack of love. Good. Just because they don't believe with you don't mean that they don't love you. It simply means that they're limited themselves and there might be some chance that they don't even believe in their own survival. And when you're called by God, your response is always worship. Because the enemy uses those tactics to begin to flood our mind with questions that's true. That's true. and doubts yeah. and worry and fears. People will not always hope and praise and believe in your survival. That's why God says put your trust in Him. Always. 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 Because sometimes you can trust folk, but you know, but then you have your little seasons where you think about it twice. But trust in him always. always. Chapter 14, verse 1. I'm going quickly. I'm excited about this word. It says, man that's born of a few days. Born of a woman is a few days. Right. It says, and full of trouble. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Listen, the Hebrew word for trouble is amal. A-M-A-L. Amal. And it means wearing effort, labor, toil, or to travail. Amal, the Hebrew word for trouble, means to be a wearing effort. Mm. A wearing effort. It means to labor. Yeah. It means to toil. It means to travail. Mm -hmm. As soon as I read that understanding, I immediately went and looked up. I, I got Siri on my iPhone, so I said, Siri, tell me what the definition of travail is. And Siri says, and I got the I got the male version of Siri because I got sick of you know the woman version. After a while, she just was irritating me. So I, I got a different voice. I found out they had another voice. I just clicked over to the other voice. And so the, and so and so so he said he said um he said um so I guess I need to name him Siri. I'm gonna call him Siri. Um so so Siri said that to me. He says um he says travail means um the concluding state of pregnancy. From the onset of contractions to the birth of a child. I said, excuse me, is this sorry or is this God? So he, so he, so he says, it is the concluding state of a pregnancy. From the onset of contractions to the birth of a child. In other words, man is born of a woman, is born of a few days, 
and full of trouble. Trouble means travail. Travailing is the concluding state of a pregnancy from the contraction, from the pain, from the trouble, all the way to the birth of the child. Uh, which means that this, uh, that understand right now, that you must understand that your pain is producing your purpose. Listen, sometimes we think about the trouble that we're experiencing. It's the beginning of the birthing or the beginning of the conception of our greatness. But God is saying, no, that's not what it is. See, see, your pain and your trouble is not the beginning stages of your purpose. It's the concluding stages of your purpose. Ah, which means this, this is profound right here. That I ordained you when you was yet in your mother's womb. When I created the heavens and the earth. When I formed man. When I created all of these things. It was at that time that I created you. It was at that time that I conceived you in the spirit. Until your ordained time to be birthed in flesh. Which means that your time on earth is not the beginning stages of your purpose. Uh, but it is from the concluding stages of pregnancy. From the contractions to the birth of the child. Which means that the tribulation that you are experiencing. The trials that you are enduring. The trouble that you are up against. It's not the beginning. It's actually the concluding stages. In other words, your purpose is being birthed. Ah, the greatness is coming to fruition. Look, I tell you right now to think about everything that you are experiencing and get a whole different understanding of what you're going through. Honey, you're not going through the last stages of your demise. You're not going through the beginning stages of your greatness. You're not really about to end this thing. But this is just the beginning of the birth of your thing. That right now the conceiving process is all over. You're getting ready to produce. Somebody ought to tell your neighbor my producing is on the way. It's actually right here. I'm literally in the birthing room. I'm literally in the delivery room. I'm in the stages of contraction on to the birth of my baby. Somebody ought to tell your neighbor my purpose is getting ready to come out. Uh, my purpose is getting ready to come out. My purpose is literally getting ready to come out. There's no reason for me to lose my mind. I don't have to give up after all. I don't have to throw in the towel after all. Why? Because it's literally getting ready to burst some stuff out of me. My trouble it's my opportunity to travail. My pain is my opportunity to praise. My labor is my opportunity to lament. Somebody ought to tell the Lord, I thank you for my trouble. I thank you for my tribulation. I thank you for my trials. I thank you for my hardship. I thank you for considering me. Because you've considered me, you've prepared me for purpose. Somebody ought to tell your neighbor, my pain is producing my purpose. My trials is producing my triumph. Somebody ought to tell your neighbor that the vicious things that I experience is preparing me for victory. Somebody say, right now my trouble. So I say, what's up trouble? So I say, hello trouble. How are you trouble? I'm excited that you are in my life. I am excited that I get a chance to meet you. I'm excited that I've gotten a chance to know you. Because it's of my trouble that I'm reminded that my purpose is being produced. Look, the Bible says that after a while that Job's friends came to him. And when Job's friends came to him, they looked at him for seven days. They stared at him for seven days because they could not understand why he looked the way that he looked. The Bible precisely says that they could not recognize him. Look, sometimes when you go through your tribulation, people will always be able to recognize you. Listen, if when you go through what you go through, nothing is different about you. Something is wrong. Something ought to change about you when you're going through. 
And when you go through, the Bible says that they sat there and looked at them seven days. And then after a while, Job began to say some things to them. And for a long time in the book of Job, they went back and forth, back and forth, because they tried to defend the asset or defend the mindset that because you're going through what you're going through, then something must be wrong with you. That you must be outside of the will of God. That you must by some chance have sinned greatly. But what I've come to let you know today, that your trials are not evident of sin. That there are some things that you are experiencing in life simply because you are called. There are some things that you are enduring in life simply because he's considered you. There are some things that you are enduring in life simply because he loves you. There are some things that you are going through in life simply because he's purposed you. Look, but don't get it twisted now. There are going to be some things that you experience as a result of your error. But for the purpose of this message, God is sending you some encouragement to understand that at all things and at all times, worship him in the midst of whatever it is that you're going through. Because in the midst of what you're going through, it's not your opportunity to leave God alone, but it's your time to beg of him to have his way with you. And so the Bible goes on, and it says in the 42nd chapter of Job, in verse chapter, or verse 10, it says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. It is also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Verse 12 says, so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. It says, for he fed 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, and a thousand yoke of asses, it says, and a thousand she asses. Uh, it comes to let you know that even though you're going through right now, even though you've lost everything that you have, that sometimes you gotta lose in order to win. I tell you right now to say, God, I thank you for everything I've lost. I thank you for every headache I've ever had. I thank you for every trial I've ever endured. I thank you for every heartache I ever had to go through. They left me and they forsake me, but I thank you for it. I almost lost my mind, but I thank you for it. I almost threw in the towel, but I thank you for it. I almost let go, but I thank you for it. I almost gave up, but I thank you for it. I almost ran away, but I thank you for it. I almost cried every day of my life, but I thank you for it. I thank you for every person that's ever backstabbed me. I thank you for every person that's ever lied on me. I thank you for every person that's ever cheated on me. I thank you for every person that's ever let me down. I thank you for every person that's ever pushed me back. I thank you for everything that's come in my way. I thank you for everything that's ever caused me to fall. I thank you for everything that's made me literally question my existence. Uh, but it's in the midst of those things that I have a reason to praise you. Because I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises, you'll get it in a minute, shall continually, continually through my ups and my downs, through heartache and pain. When I'm sick and when I'm in health, I will bless the Lord at all times. Somebody ought to tell the person next to you, I will, I shall, I must, I have to. It is a requirement. It is my responsibility. Because uh, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will 
We are no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow. What that means is that it's not really death that you're facing. It's only a shadow. It's not as bad as you really thought it was. It's only a facade. Don't give up. It ain't as bad as it sleeps. Throw through in the towel. It's not as bad as it sleeps. Because we lay through our walk through the valley of the shadow. Of the shadow. Of the shadow. Of the facade. Of the mirage. Of the fake of death. The stuff that the devil has thrown at you is only a fake. It's only a hoax. It's not as bad as you really thought it is. The reason why is because thou art with me. It's not death because thou art with me. His hand is on me. Satan and God can't deal with me at the same time. His hand can't be on me while God's hand is upon me. So the things that I'm experiencing is merely only the shadow of death. I ought not fear no evil. Why? Because he is with me. He's occupying the space that the devil really wants. He's consuming the area that the devil really wants to get into. He's only testing you from afar. He's only tipping you from afar. The devil really is not as close to you as you think he is. He's not as close. And we give him credit. We hype him up, we amp him up, and we start blaming him for everything. He's not even as close as you think he is. And the only reason why he's able to do what he's doing is because God has consent. Stop crying when the devil do stuff to you. It ain't even real. Because nothing exists without God. Stop losing your mind when you go through. It ain't as bad as it seems. Throwing a towel, you've been considered. Everything bad is a negative. Everything that's bad is not negative. We make hard things negative. God never intended for your trials to produce sorrow. Things that you are experiencing were not ordained for you to give up. Hear me. Hear me. They were not created. They were not orchestrated. They were not ultimately allowed for you to throw in the towel. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Shall mount up upon wings as eagles, they shall run. Not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. He's prepared you for your problems because your problems are producing your purpose. He has prepared you for your problems. Because your problems were created to produce your purpose. Sometimes you have to lose in order to win. It takes the bad things in your life to intercept and merge with the good things for you to walk into the purpose of the Lord. Somebody tell your neighbor, bad is good. Bad is good. It says that all things work together for the good. So bad, God's eyes, is good. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was out form and it was void. 
In other words, it was chaotic. There was chaos in the atmosphere. God took chaos and he brought formality to it. He brought formality to what was chaotic. There's nothing too hard for God. And as men and women of God, children of the Most High God, we often get complacent, we get comfortable. We preach and we minister and we witness to folk. And we don't walk in the same authority that we preach about. I hear the Lord say that he's getting ready.